guys and welcome to another kit review so i hope uh everyone is surviving quite well and 2021 has not turned out too stressful to start with hopefully it will be a much better year okay so today we're having a look at a kit from afe club 135th scale kit number is af35279 it is there bilstein Drakan three ton of Busing Nug 4500A. So basically it is a Bilstein Decran, so basically Bilstein Crane, three ton crane, on a Busing Nug L4500A truck chassis. So this is a vehicle recovery. So you would use this to recover half tracks, um, tanks, anything that got bogged, broken or whatever. If this could lift it, and, and you'd also use it for servicing and changing um, tank engines and stuff like this. Wherever you needed service on the battlefield, one of these would be around somewhere in the service units attached to Panzer Divisions, Infantry Divisions, Motorized Infantry Divisions, just about anywhere. Okay, so let's have a look at the box. Alright, so there's a basic... Uh, color of the vehicle itself showing exactly what it is it's a crane truck fair mark number plates okay so that's a nice bit of box art shows you exactly what you're buying so this kit has does have options it does say here has a crane base dust cover can be open or closed it has outriggers for crane stabilization you can um, model those out or away okay you can have the doors open and closed just has um, PE okay so all sorts of interesting things in this one so that's the front of the box let's have a look at the sides all right so on the side you'll see four photos of the actual model so this is your toolbox open sides are open showing where all the tools and things would go accessories like cables and fittings and you name it crane and the vehicle itself with the outriggers stretched out so if you're going to have this on a diorama a recovery diorama definitely have to have the outriggers out okay on the other side just the usual 410 plus warnings etc about you know it's for collectors age 14 and over and also AFE Club which is basically the hobby fan trading company that's their address in Taiwan all right so that's the box let's have a look inside okay so fairly heavy packed with just about everything so you have first bag out four sprues exactly the same these look like they're Outriggers and accessories. Next bag out. Two sprues exactly the same. So these would be mud guards, wheels. Next bag is mud guards, suspension units, fittings. That looks like chassis to me. Right. Body of the vehicle. Looks like it's got wood grain on it. Yes, definitely. This will be the toolbox. Okay. Next bag is... Looks like the front of the vehicle. Suspension, tools, engine parts. So there is a lot, and I mean a lot, in this kit. As you can see, this bag contains the cabin. It's the front, the bonnet. Okay. Back top next bag out is two sprues exactly the same but these look like fittings for the actual crane all right so i can already see there's a lot of delicate parts in that and there's a lot in here this one contains the engine and it looks like a very from what i can see most definitely even the fans got detail on it a very complex 
and highly detailed engine and exhaust system. Alright, and it just keeps coming. There's a lot in this box. So, this next bag contains the actual crane body, as you can tell, swivel sides, etc. Alright, plus fittings, handles, and wheels. Alright, so what we've got here is a piece of black string, photo etch, and natural enough, the clear parts, which even looking through this plastic are definitely clear. Vinyl tires, seven. So you've got two tires on either side of the back, two front tires, and a spare. All right, and then instructions glossy, very glossy. Accessories, jerry cans. Okay, that's interesting. Multi part jerry cans. A nice little poster of the vehicle, beautiful artwork, okay, even tells you here, box art, KFZ 100, number 86, what it is, nice, so you can frame that up, and then in the bottom of the box, you've got more AFV kits, which are Tiger, Churchill, that's your uh, chassis for the uh, Bussing Nug L4500S, okay eight wheeled armed car etc so they're all AFV kits all right so that's the box that's what's in it in a minute we'll have a look at the instructions and see how we go okay so let's have a look at the instructions all right so on the front you have got English and Chinese History of the vehicle with basic specifications, the fact that the what the vehicle could tow, it could be a three or a two ton capacity on the crane, etc. So as I said, you can use these vehicles were used for swapping engines in tanks, uh, changing barrels, etc. etc. And also for towing, they had the towing capacity, it says here um wheeled vehicles but any light tank could be towed by one of these things okay so that's the front cover let's have a look on the inside okay so what we have here is your and i'll get that down here color call outs okay so you've got two four six eight ten eleven colors specified good sang you Sango, Sango, whatever. Hobby Color, Mr. Color, Mr. Color Spray. Humbrol, Ravel, Life Color. Okay, so if you don't use one of those, standard reference is for German Army coloring. Overall dark yellow with green, red, brown, camo, however you want. These vehicles were used all over the place, so you could just camouflage it however you felt because having seen um, color footage from the end of the war anything went as far as camouflage on German vehicles All right so not only does it give you a history but it also shows you the variety of uses for this vehicle okay this is it set up to um, hoist something that's the crane it also shows you that the crane used on your standard STKFZ 7 half track. It could be used to tow a trailer, a tank on it, engine swaps, okay, turret swaps, lifting vehicles, etc. etc. So anything you can think of for a crane, these things would have used would have been used for. Alright, that's good. I like that. That is actually really good because it does show you engine replacement of a Tiger One, okay. I've actually seen that photo somewhere. Maybe it's in my collection. We shall see. Anyway, let's have a look and see how you build this beast. And it is going to be a bit of beast. It is a highly detailed model. It would definitely be for someone who has a lot of patience and a fair bit of experience. All right, so there's a lot to this. 
a lot of fine things as well. Okay, so as you can tell, we start off with chassis, exhaust pipe, cross members. All right, so as I said, it's a complex model. Same again on this side. Okay, chassis sides. All right, so these are your um, fuel tanks, um, diesel tanks, whatever. And there are color call outs as we go. Continuing on with the chassis build, mud guards are on. Front of the vehicle, there's your radiator. Okay, fuel tank, more parts are going on the front. Bumpers go, are on, plus the headlights. And there is a lot to this. Okay, so next we get to the actual running gear. So you've got your diffs going in, suspension. All right, so as you can tell, even these are quite complex. Right, this diff section alone is made up of five different parts. Okay, like I said, experienced builder or someone with a lot of patience. This is not going to be a weekend kit. All right, then you get to the tires. So the tires are vinyls. You go on hubs, that's enough. Polycaps, I believe probably polycaps or something similar. So the wheels will go around. No, this vehicle does not steer. So if you want it to be the wheels turned, that would mean you would have to do a fair bit of work to actually do that. Then we have the engine. And this is quite a complex and detailed truck engine. So if you have the ability, I would say definitely add a few um, pipes, you know, usual um, spark plug leads, etc, etc. Dress that engine up and display it properly. But then you would need your video references, okay? Internet is great, great tool. Use it every time. Okay, then we carry on. So, gearbox onto the engine, sump on the engine, and as I said, this is a complex engine. Already has alternators, fan belts, really nicely detailed fan that I've already seen on the sprues. All right, so there's a lot to this. It does tell you how to paint the engine red, brown, German, grey, silver. Okay, so that just engine drive shafts everything goes on all right and that completes your main chassis and then you get to the cabin and again you've got your driver's pedals gear lever etc all the interior fittings for the actual front of the cabin including your instruments it does show you how to paint them And then we continue on with the seats and the top and the back. So basically constructing in the entire cabin with all the fittings. And there are fittings that go on the inside firewall, as well as the wintry wipers and handles, etc. And mirrors for the cabin. And then the cabin gets fitted onto the chassis. Right, so at this stage you've got your doors. So your doors do have internal and external handles so you can have them open or closed it's entirely your choice but um, for me I'd be tempted because of the detail in, in the actual cabin itself to have the at least one of the doors open so you could see inside clearly all right and then you have your bonnet front radiator okay sides of the bonnet tools etc now I have seen L500s uh, 4500s sorry without these side panels all right just exposing the engine so that is an option that you could go for leave off the tools leave off the sides mount the tools somewhere else okay and that way the engine is exposed for all the world to see and it is a beautiful looking engine from what I can tell just from these drawings okay so next big bit 
is the toolbox okay spare tire also goes in here we we'll see this is a complex box that you can also leave the lid open the sides open etc so you can fill it with all sorts of accessories especially if you have a Tamiya, Italeri, Mini Art, any of the German workshop, field workshop kits, um, they are full of tools and things that you can throw into this and dress it up with. That would be a definite because there's no way that that box would be empty the way it is. Alright, so once you've completed the box, it goes on the back behind the cab and then you get to more chassis parts so this is basically your um, rear deck supports for the crane okay so as you can tell this alone is made up of two four six eight ten dozen fifteen parts really complex really really complex more parts going on the back so small bolt um, plates etc going on here for and as you can tell some handles and things are going in here for the back part and then you get to the actual rear platform this is your crane swivel okay that alone is made up of well there's three there there's three there all right six parts that's your base more boxes go on the base this will be the underside of the base okay mud guards go on and then the base itself gets fitted to the chassis all right then you've got the top of the toolbox so with more tools on it so there's a lot a lot of detail it's really nice it's really beautiful detail on this yeah this would take a lot of patience and it would definitely be a long build right you'll spend a few weeks on this vehicle all right so carry on with more accessories support stands etc that go with the box all right more swivel parts jack jerry cans so we're getting up to all the accessories and things that go with the crane vehicle we haven't even touched the crane yet we're already up to step 40 which is even more parts all right more bracing more accessories towing bars etc okay so if you're going to tow a light skin vehicle with this there's your towing bars depending on how much length you needed um, you would use a different type of towing bar etc for the vehicles all right and then you've got jerry cans which go underneath so you don't necessarily have to use all the jerry cans i'd use a few and then throw in something else to be, give it a bit of variety okay and finally step 42 we get to the crane so now we're getting to the jib the crane the sides including all the wheels etc that go inside all right so pulley wheels etc all in here and then the actual covers so you do have a choice here that you can leave the cover open and closed depending on how you want it to be um, personally I would probably build the entire crane okay get it all set up with the jib on keep it entirely separate from the vehicle because you will have to string it with the black string which they've included because that would be cable on a normal crane okay once you've got all that done and you've painted it up that's when I would attach it to the body but it depends on that final construction but it looks like it should be quite easy enough or you should be capable enough I hope of getting close to that point where you could almost build the crane separate and then um, mount it to the vehicle.
but that would be a little bit more reading the instructions so if i'm wrong on that one guys apologies okay so crane goes on even more fittings so these are your outriggers as they call them these are your supports anytime you've got a crane vehicle and you'll notice on any kind of crane even modern cranes old cranes didn't matter they always had to stabilize the vehicle before they could lift something otherwise it would just fall over and how many times have we seen videos on youtube of cranes falling over all right so you'd only have these extended if you're actually going to have this on a diorama lifting something if you're having it driving then you'll have them folded up like this all right and then we come to almost the last step which is an even more detail so these are the side panels side doors of the toolbox and as you can tell right we already have one two three parts here we don't glue that this goes on here these are on the sides and that is the side of the box right and even more parts are going on fittings etc etc so PE parts are involved in this and even more same again on the other side all right so you get a choice you can have that open or closed that's your choice open or closed if you are setting this up like it's um, hoisting something up or just about to okay all of these would be open all the tools would be accessible to the guys operating this crane so you can imagine that all of the toolbox the front doors everything would be open because just think about when um, you see a tow truck on the road and he has to do things everything is there ready to go okay and that is basically it final step just mounting the crane so it can swivel around that's what it's saying it's saying basically don't glue this so you want this crane to be able to swivel and go around okay that's 53 steps and very complex parts list all right so as you can tell by the layout there's a lot to this this is if you've lost a bit or something like that you can request a replacement from AV club and then we get to the painting of the vehicle so we have here Stug Uptalung 209 sorry sorry my bad Stug Uptalung 209 eastern front 4243 body color Sherman gray all over Panzer division Panzer Grenadier division sorry my apologies to Großdeutschland eastern front body color German gray so there's two German grays shown here right 42 43 43 i'm not sure why there are two different colors i think that's just the printing all right this being full glass color this being just normal non-color um, instruction sheet so all over gray no camouflage okay and on the back you've got the first company panzer up 501 so it's the heavy heavy tank battalion 501 which is tiger tanks in tunisia it says winter 42 43 so that would have been coming very close to the end of the war in uh, north africa over all over dark yellow with green camouflage okay and this is your decals all right so there are a lot of decals that go on to the crane you can probably see them better on this photo and we'll have a look at those shortly okay so that's the instructions very comprehensive there is a lot to this vehicle and as i said it's definitely not for a beginner okay in a second we'll have a look at the sprues and uh carry on from there okay so welcome back all right so let's have a look at the first thing our 
so I don't know if you guys can see this um, see if I can get them in focus okay so what you have here and I said this is a very complex and highly detailed you see those little pins you have four little pins right there okay so those pins are actually part of the crane mechanism they are I would say gudgeon pins all right I will show you where they go they are part M that's those two pins there which go into those two fittings there so they're basically gudgeon pins there's two in this one okay and on the other side there they are again part M those two and they go into those two fittings there and they look like that when they're in place okay so yes and they are little tiny pins um, very easily lost they would be no more than no more than i'd say two millimeters in length okay so the carpet monster is going to love these all right so that's the most fragile delicate part delicate part let's have a look at what else we got okay so knife out the way pe okay so there's your pe radiator grill these parts here, anyone who's ever made these things before will know that that is for the jerry cans, okay, and some other straps, etc., for the vehicle. Very fine, very detailed, and yes, I've already managed to bend it. <sighs> what can you do? Okay, so that's the PE. You also. That's the PE. You also get, and I'll show you like this, black piece of string. This is the cable on the crane. Okay, and decals. All right, so as you can tell, these are very, very detailed decals. These are all your warning signs, your specifications, etc instruments for the crane okay i don't know if you can see the whites uh, see if you can get the reflection on them not easy they're all white decals right here all right unit decals number plates etc so i'll give you a shot of those very shortly but yes the decals for this vehicle are quite nicely done and almost you could almost i can read them but you might not be because the camera might not focus on them okay so i'll give you a shot of those those all right next we will have a look at another important part which is the clear parts your front windows your side windows and as you can tell with my hand they are extremely clear okay they're very nice you can that's almost like glass so I really do like that and of course no my luck I guarantee you I'll slip up and put a finger fingerprint on one of them anyway that's gonna be my problem all right All right, so next we'll have a look at a couple of the smaller screws, just to give you an idea of the detail. All right, so you do get two of these, exactly the same. So as you can tell, you see your wheel hubs, mud guards, toolboxes for underneath. Okay, and these are 
fittings for the chassis okay these are your um, pressure tanks and also pneumatic tanks etc door handles lights and other handles and hooks as you can tell all right the attachment points a little bit heavy and especially for there so that would be tricky getting those off and the rings without damaging especially something like that but like I said this model is for experienced modelers who have a lot of patience and I think you're probably going to need it and a lot of care and attention to detail for something like that handle like that okay so that's those two little ones the next The next ones, you have four of these, all exactly the same, and they are, okay, these are chassis fittings, handles and cables, and other fine points as you can tell. Alright, some very fine detail here. All right, towing hooks, all right, things like that. Okay, so not too bad. The detail is really nice. Not too much flash, but yeah, they will be, like they're really nice detail, but they will be tricky to get off the sprue without destroying them. So as I said, patience, gentlemen, patience. Next up, we will have two of these, exactly the same. So there's a few duplicate sprues in this. And as you can tell, these are your vehicle towing bars, step-ups, and uh, rack, I guess you could call it dividers, for underneath the vehicle tray, and also frame parts for the chassis and also for the crane and again some very small very delicate parts so yes especially things like that where the where it joins onto the sprue and it's quite heavy so those kind of things have a tendency to break if you're not careful Alright, so let's have a look at something that's a little bit bigger, because that's all the fine parts. Okay, so next row out is your main chassis members, mud guards, suspension. Okay, some more. Um, these are your drive shafts. Right, fittings for the for the actual uh, vehicle, and also. These are your chassis cross members. Okay, so as you can tell, the chassis is quite complex. Um, it will take a little bit of care, um, possibly even a little bit of a jig to make sure that the chassis is actually straight. Okay, so let's have a look in the detail. So not a huge amount of detail on the mudguard, although there is a bit of tread marking there. Some really nice detail on here, which is the name of. Turn around that way. Okay, Bussing Nag. Can you see that? Alright, 
so that's actually your uh, number plate so somehow I don't think that's visible there's your suspension details your fuel tank and as you can tell you've got some springs and other fittings for the crane and also for the drive chassis on this chassis parts it does have bolt detail on it and it all looks really crisp there is a bit of flash on parts such as the uh, molding joints etc but nothing major that I've seen nothing major at all in this kit at all in this kit all right so next draw out is the main tray and your toolbox okay so there is space between the toolbox and the cabin so um, if possible you might want to and if it's possible it means reading the instructions carefully if several times you may be able to actually make the toolbox up separate paint it up inside and out or at least inside um, same goes with the cabin of course you're gonna to have to paint that inside before you seal it up and then uh, put it all together as I said you have to have a look and see if you can actually put the crane together first and then paint that up and then fit it to the actual body of the vehicle okay so let's have a look close up the tray has some really nice fine bolts wood detail all right so it has definitely got some really nice and you can feel it you can feel the grooves in the wood same goes for the toolbox okay some very fine oops sorry my bad very fine bolt detail okay metal strapping etc on the toolbox really nice detail on the sides of the toolbox okay so the detail as far as molding is concerned is really nice it's very crisp and very sharp so that's that's beautiful actually this will be an awesome vehicle to build Okay, so next sprue is more suspension parts and fittings for the crane and for the engine. Okay, so gearbox, etc., um, pulleys, and things like this for the crane, tools, very fine, exhaust pipes. Okay, so let's have a look up in close. So tools are always important. And as you can tell, there's a bit of flash there. Okay. So literally, where it joins on here, got a bit of flash. So this kit is not super perfect as far as not having flash on it, but the detail is, and you can tell, the detail on the parts, the bolts, etc. They're very sharp there is a fair bit of cleanup that's going to be needed on a lot of these parts so as i said before and i'll keep saying it this is definitely for an experienced modeler to build but overall not a huge amount of flash and like i said the detail is i think the detail is awesome Okay, so what we have next is a little one. 
these are your jerry cans okay so having made afe club kits before highly detailed jerry cans separate handles separate caps and yes there's a separate uh, pe reinforcing which goes around the middle of the jerry can so really nice and you do get we got there two one two is that eight ten oh, lost count now twelve jerry cans for this vehicle that's pretty good okay so next up okay so next up is the engine engine exhaust pipes okay gearbox etc all right that's your fan that's your jack and your radiator all right so the engine detail and i give you this close up here the detail on the engine is really nice really crisp bolt detail on the gearbox okay radiator grill fan belt have a look at the fan okay that's your fan how many detailed fans do you see like that that's beautiful okay this is a big fan this is a big truck okay same goes for the jack really nice detail okay you've got your exhaust and your intakes and fittings for the engine okay so that's beautiful like i said it's a really complex engine beautiful looking engine all it needs is some spark plug wires and a bit of oil line or something like that that's your internet references dress it up and away you go Okay, so this is the second last sprue. Yep, second last sprue. Second last sprue is sides of the crane, base of the crane, and fittings for the crane. Okay, let's have a look at the detail. Oops, sorry about that. Try to get away. As you can tell, some really nice bolt detail on the crane sides okay there is a bit of flash on some of these and the cleanup will be and removal for something like that will be quite difficult but uh, patience that is going to be almost that's going to be a very tricky piece to get off without breaking okay so yes challenging some very small parts on here all right hooks and um clips etc that will need a lot of care to get off without damaging or losing on the carpet okay on the carpet Okay, and the last sprue is the actual cabin. Okay, so top, back, front, bonnet, radiators. Okay, so you do have a choice here. Some optional and some more tools. All right, so let's have a close-up look at that. All right really nice detail very sharp detail on the doors inside i love the detail on the radiator okay nice detail on the back of the vehicle let's have a look at the other side not much to see on the other side there's detail on the doors etc but um nothing huge so these are your radiator sides radiator sides sorry these are your bonnet sides and 
yes if it was up to me I would probably leave at least one possibly both of them off so I could see the engine and dress that engine up appropriately okay so that is the last brew That brings us to the very last pieces. Poly caps to make sure everything goes around. And the tyres. Seven tyres. Okay, moulding is in the middle. As you can tell, we'll get that in focus, girl. There you go. It does kind of say continental on those tyres. All right. But the tread pattern is what I'm impressed by. Have a look at that tread. Very little cleanup. In fact, I wouldn't even try because you'd just destroy it. Unless you wanted to flatten them down a bit. But that tread pattern on those tyres is absolutely beautiful. Alright. Okay, so that is it as far as this kit's concerned. That brings us to the end of this review. So there you go. That is AFV Club's Bielstein Dreckhammer 3 ton of Bussing Nag 4500A. Okay, so basically it is a Bussing Nag L4500A truck with a Bielstein Dreckhammer 3 ton crane on the back. Awesome kit, highly detailed, definitely recommended for experienced modelers only. Alright, so Hope you got something from this, and as usual, until next time, take it easy, stay well, and I'll see you later.